Her vision dwells from behind the scenes, but her creativity thrives in the spotlight. Creative music director Kim Burst is responsible for a number of unforgettable televised performances from artists such as Beyonce, Destiny's Child, Monica, Jamie Foxx, Sierra, Lettucey, the list goes on. She's also instrumental to the ongoing success of JLo's All I Have Las Vegas Residency. Kim is most known for her longtime position as creative music director for BET's Black Girls Rock. It was a pleasure to have the opportunity to chat with her and to learn more about her 20 plus years of success in the music industry. We'll just get right into my quick chat with creative music director to the stars, Kim Burse. Kim, thank you so much for talking with Jano's PR blog today. Let's start from the beginning. You've been a musical genius since the age of seven. Was it a natural ability or did you take classes? How, how'd you get into it? Definitely, I had like a little kind of recorder organ uh, toy that I used to play on all the time. And then my mother uh, signed me up for piano lessons. Mm-hmm. And then I just, I took piano lessons for almost 10 years after that. And, you know, of course, just grew to love it more and more and more, um, you know, as I continued to play and then started playing in church at 11 did for choirs by the time I was 13, you know, mm-hmm. kind of a child prodigy and just was always in, uh, you know, band and music at school. Yeah. I was uh, the youngest orchestra conductor at my uh, school. They only usually gave that position to seniors, but I was a junior when I received it. So, you know, it's just, it's definitely been a part of me. Absolutely. I did read that and I thought that was awesome. And so like but the next point I was going to go into, I guess a career in music was inevitable after having those accolades at a young age. <laughs> yeah, you know, so it just kind of just flowed, you know, I just kind of knew I was supposed to do something in entertainment. Right, right. And so you you went on to MBI. Um, well, I saw what you had a brief stint at Berkeley, but you finished, you know, with very, very high ratings at MBI. And so tell me about that. Like, I know Berkeley, they're, they're both really great schools. What what was the shift and what made you decide to go ahead and finish at MBI? Uh, I actually, there was a uh, like a welcoming uh, seminar. Uh, and my theory teacher at the time, and, and I, I hate, I can't remember his name, mm-hmm. uh, but he gave us this big lecture of just basically saying, you know, when you finish this school, you're just going to have a nice diploma that says you play really good or you sing really good, mm-hmm. you know, or whatever you do in music, you do it really good. But that's not going to guarantee that you're going to work with Quincy Jones or Michael Jackson or at the time, Layla Hathaway had just got her record deal. You know, and he was using mm-hmm. that as an example because mm-hmm. she had left the school. Um, when she got signed, he's like, you know, there's no guarantee that you're going to get signed to, you know, a major record deal. There's no guarantee. He says, what, what determines that is what you do on the outside of this school. Right. And so I thought about that. I was like, okay, I'm from Atlanta and in Atlanta, every major record company has a distribution office Mm -hmm. in Atlanta, not in Boston. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I can go back home and learn about music business and then try to you know get closer to the record labels that are in town my parents don't have to play pay room and board out of state fees yeah out of state (laughs) fees collect phone calls all of that yeah save them save them some money and so i came home and uh that's what i did and uh before i even graduated i was interning at motown when barry gordy was actually in his last kind of semester there right. at Motown before he handed it over to Gerald Busby. I did read that, and I thought that was so amazing. I mean, how many people can say that they actually worked at uh, Barry Gordy Motown? Right. <laughs> you know, right. It, it hasn't been the same since then. So, yeah, and, I, right. and I'm sure working at Motown, you have so many takeaways and so many unforgettable memories. It's just a brief stint because he was he was leaving Mm -hmm. and once he left and uh, let Gerald Busby take over then I switched over to MCA records and that's where I really got my rearing from in promotions and marketing Mm -hmm. and they had so many hits at the time I mean they had uh, New Edition they had Bobby Brown they had Guy they had uh, the emergence of Uptown Mm -hmm. Records which had Mary J. Blige and Heavy D and Father MC and Joe mm-hmm. to see and uh, so I, I came I came into MCA right when it just truly 
you know, exploded. Uh, the, the coolest thing just recently when I was watching the uh, new edition story mm-hmm. is I remember just about all of that once they got to uh, MCA Records because mm-hmm. um, I was there for a lot of, when a lot of those records were made and came down the pipeline for us to uh, wow. promote. So they probably you know? could have consulted with you on, on telling the story, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit, but they, they got it right, though. They well, definitely got it right. Well, that's good. That's You know, I hear they didn't get the Tupac movie right. At least they got yeah. that one right. We can trust yeah, that. that's true. That's true. Yeah. That's true. And, and so I do see that, you know, you work with a lot of artists. Um, you, you moved on to Sony, and you worked as yes. A&R manager. And, uh, you know, I, I did see that you work with artists like Escape and, um, you know, mainly Escape and, and Beyonce, but I really want to say Escape. Like, how do you feel about seeing some of those artists that you work with back in the day actually getting back together and still doing it? You know, like. Well, it's so funny that you ask because I saw them um, at uh, the BET Awards. That was my, was my first time seeing them all together again mm-hmm. since we worked together in the 90s. And it was so good to see them all. And I was like, oh, it's a family reunion. Yeah, and uh, because uh, I did uh, Tamar Braxton's performance on BET Awards this year, okay. So I was there, and they actually went on like one or so acts before her. So that's how I was able to see them. So it was yeah. a, a big surprise. And they're getting ready to go back on tour, and they actually asked me to uh, work with them on their tour. And why so wouldn't they? I'm hoping it all <laughs> comes around full circle. Yeah. Um, so, uh, get with them and work together with them again because I was like one of the first people to ever take them into the studio so um you know it's it's just a lot of great stories and and to see them come from those young girls back in the 90s to where they are now it's just uh it's great yeah and and they look amazing it's really refreshing and good to see it it takes me back that was my high school era so you know it really takes me back to that point in time (laughs) yes to see them and so um I, i did mention beyonce and destiny's child so you know we can't not mention beyonce just having her babies have, yeah. Are you still in contact with her? Have you have they sent you photos of the pit of the babies and how they how yeah. are they doing? The last time I saw Beyonce was in December, mm-hmm. um, and she was doing a, a kind of a joint presentation of like a movie screening mm-hmm. of Lemonade with Quincy Jones. Okay, and I think I think even at that time I didn't even know she was having a baby and so i have i don't have direct contact with her like i used to mm-hmm. um but i am able to call a few people if it were something i really really needed to talk to her about <laughs> i might i might be able to get her on the phone if not i could definitely get an answer from her right but, well, uh, hey. you know so i'm able to at least get a message well you know i feel like to get a message to her but no i haven't i'm i haven't worked with her directly since 2012 Mm -hmm. uh, because I've been with uh, Jennifer Lopez since 2011. Okay and so I see that you've been doing her Vegas residency. I know Mm -hmm. that's been extremely awesome. (laughs) Yeah that's been great. It's been really great. So you're actually so how is that working? You're producing every single show or or what's your role within her residency? Uh, Just uh, well I was the um, musical conductor uh, director for the entire show, pulling all the pieces together, the, the different arrangements together, whether I worked on it or whether I worked on it with someone or I hired someone to work on a specific arrangement. Mm-hmm. Uh, I brought it all together under one umbrella to make it a complete show, mm-hmm. of course, along with her uh, and uh, her manager and creative directors. So just being a part of the, the, the main creative team and the process of making it into something uh, was my responsibility for that show. And so uh, I'm at every single show just to make sure that it continues to roll without a hitch. Yeah. Uh, or if at any time she wants to change or add a song. So well, that's, that's my main responsibility with that particular show. I think that's simply amazing. I um, I see, I, I think I noticed on Instagram a little while ago, you guys were, um, you had a, a makeshift dance group, I believe, or singing group. <laughs> While oh. you... <laughs> Oh, mine? Yeah, no, there, there were you guys were. I think you were at a at one of the one of the practices for Jennifer Lopez, and then you guys had some type of um, dance group, and you were telling people you can't couldn't be in your dance group. Oh, Stevie, that yeah. w- that's her dressing room, believe it or not, because <laughs> it's that big. It has wow, a, 
it has a it has a sitting room for guests to come in. It's got a bar and oh, that's sofa awesome. and all that stuff. So we were all congregated in that room and we get together and we kind of lip sync to songs until <laughs> she comes out and joins us. It's just a, our little app, what we call our after show shenanigans. Yeah. Well, you got um, you have so. to have a good time when you're working hard for sure. Yeah. And, yeah. She, and, and she's great. So, you know, and she, she's, she's there for all of the good times. So I appreciate it. Absolutely. And so I'll move on to kind of just briefly touch on some of your accolades in television. Um, you have music uh, where you've done music direction or supervising for The View, for um, the White Hot, to- White Hot Chocolate Christmas with Taraji and, and Terrence Howard. You know, I think it's amazing that, you know, the, the biggest thing, we have the artists on the forefront who usually get all of the publicity, but I think it's really, really important for people to truly know that without people like you, these things would not happen seamlessly and, and you know, with as much creativity. So I just think that it's amazing that, you know, you, just one person has had so many accolades and over the years and they're continuing and, and leading up to Black Girls Rock. You've been yeah. music um, program director for uh, six years now, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Actually, we're going into our seventh uh, production as as I speak. That's that's why I couldn't talk to you earlier. I was on a conference call. They just called me and said, "Can you jump on this call?" Yeah. And so uh, we're in now in the talks of what that show is going to be and who we're honoring and who the musical guests are. But yeah, this will be my seventh year being the musical director for that show. That that's amazing, and it's coming up. You know, why would I not talk to Kim about, you know, just everything and leading up to Black Girls Rock? I want to congratulate you on your tenure and just your longevity in the industry and for being as humble as you are. I, I just truly appreciate you even having dialogue with me from time to time and just responding. That's that's a really big thing. And thank you so much. Uh, yeah, for sure. No problem. No problem. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, that I won't take up too much of your time because I know you are extremely busy. But I, like I said, just wanted to just just learn a little bit more about you and just learn how are you so amazing? You're only one person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know I, I've been trying to clone myself for the past couple of years, but it's just not working it's, out. It's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You know, you just keep keep training them up the way you would have them do things, and things will be okay. I'm sure yeah, you have so an I'm iron trying. fist out there. <laughs> yeah, it's a couple of me I'm training out here. I'm trying to do my best. Awesome. Well, okay, Kim. Thank you. Thank you so much for for answering my questions today. And I will be in touch. And please keep us updated on anything that you have coming up. You got it. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. Take care. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye.